What's going on guys, Mango here, and today I'm bringing you a guide on everyone's favorite piece of precision German engineering. No, not that one. Yes, Reinhardt. Reinhardt is a hero I'm particularly passionate about because he's one of my all-time favorite heroes and I see him being played wrong so often, especially by new players. In this guide, I'm going to show you how to get the most value out of Reinhardt's kit. And if you follow along, you'll be swinging, striking, and shattering the enemy to oblivion in no time. I'm going to start by talking about positioning because I think this is the most misunderstood thing about Reinhardt for a lot of players before moving on to his shield, hammer, fire strike, pin, and shatter. And then closing off by going over how to win the classic Rhine v Rhine duel and talking about team comps. I'll put a link to each section in the description. With that out of the way, let's get started. First off, we need to talk about positioning. Positioning, while important in Overwatch in general, is especially important for playing Reinhardt due to his lack of mobility and the fact that he needs to set an edge for his team to play behind. Understanding where to be positioned on the battlefield with Reinhardt is absolutely critical to you and your team's success. In very basic terms, that means playing in the front line and keeping the rest of your team behind you. That means drawing a line in the sand and telling the other team, if you want to get to my team, you need to get through me first. This draws on another main principle of tank gameplay, which dictates that a main tank's job is to create space for his or her team. They do this by trading their high health, armor, shield, and defensive abilities for space. The main way this manifests in Reinhardt's gameplay is by minimizing the amount of empty space between yourself and the enemy team. You should be actively pushing to close this gap by using health, shielding, and natural cover to try to get yourself within swinging range. Unlike ranged tanks like Orisa or Sigma, Reinhardt is most effective at close range, so if you're standing at a distance with your shield up letting your team shoot behind you, you are missing out on a ton of value from Reinhardt's kit. Think about it, if you're not getting close enough to swing your hammer, you might as well be playing Orisa or Sigma. So let's say you've gotten yourself into swinging range. Great start. Now the real fun begins. Here, you'll want to strike a delicate balance between being threatening enough to make the enemy team respect you as you encroach on their space, but not so aggressive that you overextend your welcome and end up dying. This takes the form of what I'll call short range poking. That is, taking a couple swipes at your enemy's front line to force them to back up, but quickly shielding afterwards so you don't get focused down and feed the enemy ult charge. At this point of the fight, a lot of things can happen. The main thing you'll want to look for is if any of the enemies drop to critical health, and if they're close enough to you, push in and try to secure the elimination with your hammer or fire strike, since these both cleave through enemies and ignore shields. If you die before you're able to reach your target, they were probably too far away. Once again, this is a balance, so while you want to play aggressively with Ryan, you don't want to give up your life while going for a kill. Oftentimes, this doesn't happen right away, and you'll need to go through a cycle with your short range poking. If your team isn't able to get enough damage through and your shield resources are running low, you'll need to give up your ground momentarily to allow your shield and health to recover. This usually means ducking behind the corner of whichever choke point you're trying to push through. If the enemy tries pushing into your space during this time, don't be afraid to take a couple more swipes at them to force them back. Just avoid exposing yourself to the rest of the enemy team. If you've lost one or both of your healers during this stage of the fight, you'll need to consider giving up a lot of space and going for a hard reset because pushing with Reinhardt is very likely to fail without your healers. This is going to be one of the hardest things to learn as Reinhardt, and trust me, you are going to make some mistakes along the way. You'll need to figure out when you have enough resources to push into the enemy team, how far, and when it's time to take your foot off the gas and shield up. The more you practice, the more in tune you will get with this ebb and flow, and you'll eventually start making these decisions subconsciously. The less you have to think about these decisions, the faster you will be able to make them, and the faster you're able to make them, the more you're able to control the tempo of the game and assert your will on the enemy team. I'm going to pull in a clip here that illustrates these positioning fundamentals, featuring two of the best Reinhardts in the world, Super and LH Cloudy. Watch as Super fearlessly pushes through this choke on Numbani, utilizing his health, shield, and Zari bubble to close the gap on the enemy team and get within swinging range. Simultaneously, Cloudy pulls back and shields up to protect his team from this aggressive maneuver. Once they are in close quarters, both Reinhardts engage in short range poking before choosing to hard disengage as their health gets critically low, neither Rein willing to risk their life for an elimination. 
Super uses his shield to retreat and barely makes it behind cover before his shield is destroyed. This is a masterful display of trading your health resources for space as Ryan, while balancing aggression with defense. I'm going to play this clip one more time with the sound on so you can hear all the callouts Super makes in this short sequence. I'll also include a link to the full video in the comments. Jeez. Okay, three, two, one, give me a bubble. A caveat I want to add about positioning before we move on to the next section. Most of these tips should be used when you are on attack, whether you are on attack on a 2CP map or trying to take control of a control point or fighting over a payload. If you are on defense on a 2CP map or already control a control point, you will need to approach things a little differently. Since you generally already have a good position in these scenarios, you don't need to aggressively push into the enemy team. Instead, you should try to control your power position by funneling the enemy team into a choke point. You should still be utilizing short range poking to control positioning, which may sometimes lead you into the enemy team space to secure an elimination, but you should generally try to contain them to the choke point to make it easier for the rest of your team to get damage in. Okay, now that we have positioning out of the way, let's talk about Reinhardt's shield. Reinhardt's shield health has bounced around a bit, but currently sits at 1600 HP. It regenerates 200 HP per second after it is down for 2 seconds, and once it's destroyed, it is put on a 5 second cooldown before you can pull it out again. Reinhardt moves 30% slower with his shield up, so keep this in mind if you're trying to quickly take space. The first thing I want to talk about with Reinhardt's shield is shield botting, since it kind of ties in with our first section on positioning. Shield botting is standing away from the enemy team with your shield up without moving, in theory to give your team something to shoot behind. This shield botting playstyle is flawed for many different reasons, the main one being it means you are not using your hammer to contribute meaningful damage during a team fight. Additionally, especially in lower ranks, the odds that your team is even shooting from behind your shield are fairly low, especially when you consider that Reinhardt's body and hammer obscure so much of the shield that it really only creates room for one person to shoot from on the left side of him. You're also more likely to lose the shield break war because your team is going to have one less person shooting shields than the enemy team. Once again, if this is how you want to play tank, there's nothing wrong with that, but you're much better off playing Orisa or Sigma who are able to do ranged damage from behind their shield. Ryan's kit is built to get in close to the enemy team in Brawl, so he should be played that way. You almost need to think of Ryan's shield as a personal shield that will allow him to get close and brawl out. I think a lot of players picture Ryan's shield as a way to keep their team safe from fire, when really, the best way to do that is by drawing enemies' focus onto yourself by disrupting their front line with your hammer swings. When you do shield as Ryan, you want to avoid wasting its health on harmless spam damage that likely won't kill you or your team. Try to focus on blocking easy to read impact abilities like Sigma's Accretion, Roadhog's Hook, or Anna's Anti-Grenade. If you're able to block one or two of these abilities, you can more confidently push in without your shield, knowing the enemy team has less abilities available to punish you. Another shield tip to help you when pushing into the enemy team is shield hopping. This term is pretty self-explanatory. Since you move slower when your shield is out, a more efficient way to push forward while also offering some shield protection is to jump forward then quickly pull your shield out. Your shield does not slow down the momentum from your jump, so you end up moving quite a bit faster if you chain a few shield hops together. Another small tip is that Reinhardt's shield first cracks at 50% health, then once again at 25%. At 20% health, you can hear Ryan say, Barrier is failing! While this isn't super helpful to the Reinhardt player since they can see how much health their shield has, it's good to know if you play with or against a Reinhardt. You'll also want to avoid letting your shield break since it is put on a 5 second cooldown, so try to manually drop it when its health gets under 300 and take cover to let it recharge. A very situational tip is that if you hold the primary fire button down while your shield is out, it will allow you to look around without moving your shield. I don't do this often as I prefer to keep my attention on the enemy, but I will sometimes use this to check if my team is actually behind me if I want to shatter soon. You can also use it to pull off a sneaky 180 shatter, but this is really more of a meme tactic. Last little tidbits here that I'm sure most people already know. Even if Ryan's shield is at 1 health, it is still able to block 1 instance of damage. The main application of this will be using the last shred of your shield to block a D.Va ult or a Reinhardt shatter. 
Also, you can angle your shield upwards to block shots from a Pharah or an enemy on high ground, or even a sneaky McCree that tries to throw his flashbang above your shield, but it's not something you'll find yourself doing very often. Okay, now that we've got the shield out of the way, let's talk about Reinhardt's bread and butter, his rocket hammer. Ryan's hammer was recently buffed, and instead of doing 75 damage, it now does 85. The main impact of this was Reinhardt getting his ult faster due to higher damage numbers, but it also enabled him to 3-shot a 250 HP hero by a small margin, although this is a rare occurrence because AoE healing exists. The hammer has a range of 5 meters and swings in a 180 degree arc in front of Reinhardt. The main skill you'll want to build up with the hammer is short range poking, which I covered earlier in this video, so in this section I'll focus on more technical information about the hammer. Let's start with the basics. A fundamental aspect of Ryan's hammer that sets it apart from many other characters' weapons is that it pierces shields and inflicts cleave damage. This means that even if an enemy is standing behind their shield, you can swing through the shield and damage them. This also means that if enemies are grouped up when you swing, you will deal a uniform 85 damage to everyone in your hammer's hitbox. You can contrast this to hitscans or projectiles that cannot pass through barriers and stop once they hit an enemy. This is why it's important for Reinhardt to stay close to the other team and finish off kills on the front line. He is able to inflict damage in places not many characters are able to. Another super important thing to know about Reinhardt's hammer is that it has a lagging hitbox. What this means is, as the hammer swings across your screen, the hitbox is not only at the face of your hammer, but it also stretches backwards to where your swing started from for a few moments. What's cool about this is you can take advantage of this lagging hitbox to increase your swing radius from 180 degrees to closer to 270 or even 360 degrees, depending on your sensitivity. You do this by quickly moving your reticle in the direction of the hammer swing as it's in motion, almost like you would whip your body around with a real life hammer to get a bigger swing radius. This tech is useful for hitting high mobility characters that may be dodging around you like Genji, Tracer, or Lucio. But it is also helpful if you find yourself in an all-out brawl because you may end up connecting with more enemies than you realize. Another tech I have for you that I will go into more detail with later is that you can animation cancel a hammer swing at any point by taking out your shield. The main use of this is to bait out an enemy Rhine's Earth Shatter, but I'll talk more about that in the How to Win the Rhine v Rhine Battle section. Final note about the rocket hammer, it does actually move enemies slightly in the direction of the hammer swing, meaning it's possible to get environmental kills with it. The effect is more pronounced if the opponent is jumping and has momentum. I've actually seen speed boosted Lucios get sent flying this way, but you can use this knowledge to get a cheeky environmental kill on an enemy tank that is standing a little too close to the edge. Okay, now that the rocket hammer is out of the way, let's talk about fire strike. Firestrike throws a large, slow-moving projectile straight ahead of Reinhardt, piercing any enemies or shields in its path and dealing 100 damage before it hits a wall. It has a moderate 6 second cooldown and will be the main way you gain alt charge early on in a fight. You'll also want to be careful when you use it because you'll be locked in the animation for about 1 second while casting and recovering, so if you throw it out while the entire enemy team is focusing on your shield, this 1 second is more than enough time for you to die. If you're playing behind natural cover, you can start the fire strike animation from behind cover, then quickly peek out to release the fire strike, then quickly duck back behind cover while in the animation to reduce the amount of damage you may take. What you'll want to do with fire strike is try to line up as many enemies as you can for it to hit so you get as much ult charge as possible. Aiming for grouped up enemies is a good way to do this, but oftentimes enemies aren't very grouped up, so what I'll do is line up the fire strike to go through the enemy main tank while aiming at a corner that the enemy team is hiding behind in hopes of catching someone peeking. You can also animation cancel a hammer swing with a fire strike, which enables you to perform a quick 185 damage combo, capable of taking out enemies like Tracer or Baby Diva, or quickly finishing off a weak enemy. You do this by swinging your hammer, then activating your fire strike as soon as the hammer swing connects. This quick burst of damage can catch many people off guard and makes Reinhardt a very lethal finisher. You want to use Fire Strike as much as possible in order to build up Alt Charge, so don't hold on to it for too long, let it fly. As cool of an ability as Fire Strike is, its main utility is to charge your Earth Shatter as quickly as possible, so treat it as such. I know sniping a Pharah or Echo out of the sky with it is a cool play, but if we're being real here, taking out flying enemies is not Reinhardt's job. It's better to confirm a hit on the enemy tank with it than it is to yeet it at a Pharah that's 100 meters in the air. 
Due to its slow projectile speed, another good way to utilize Fire Strike is to combo it with a CC ability, like Arissa's Halt, Zarya's Graviton Surge, or Maze Freeze targets. And that's about all I have for you with Fire Strike. It's a pretty simple ability, just remember to target grouped up enemies with it in order to build your ult as quickly as possible. Next, let's talk about Reinhardt's Charge. Reinhardt's Charge shoots him ahead in a straight line with reduced control for about 50 meters. If he collides with an enemy, he sucks them in and if you're able to pin them to a wall, it causes 300 damage. If enemies aren't directly in your path, you may bump them, dealing 50 damage and displacing them, similar to Lucio's boot. This ability lasts for 3 seconds and has a longer cooldown at 10 seconds. In my opinion, Reinhardt's Charge is one of the most interesting abilities in the game due to the various ways it can be used and abused and its interactions with other abilities. To that extent, it's hard for me to figure out where to start with this section, but I think I'm going to start with what is probably rule number one with Reinhardt's Charge, which is don't charge directly into the enemy team. Everyone has had that Leroy Jenkins teammate that will pin the enemy Ryan and take them straight through the enemy backline, only to get focused down by the whole enemy team and die. While it may feel good to land that pin, it sabotages your team in the upcoming fight. So please, don't charge directly into the enemy team. A general rule of thumb I have for charging is that you should finish your charge in neutral or friendly territory. This can be accomplished in two main ways. The first way is by taking an off angle with Ryan that allows you to get behind the enemy front line. If you manage to get into this position, charging backwards towards your team is a pretty safe play and is pretty much the opposite of the YOLO charge, as ideally you will pin the enemy tank behind your team, which will allow the good guys to focus him down safely. The other way to finish your charge in neutral or friendly territory is with a short pin. This is usually when the enemy tank puts their back against a close wall that you're able to quickly pin them against. Usually, that means these pins are less than 10 meters long and finish in between the two teams. These might be slightly riskier than the off-angle pin, but usually your team is close enough to cover you, and the advantage you gain from landing a pin is usually worth the risk. Let's talk about some interactions Charge has with other abilities. If you charge into an enemy that is utilizing a similar ability, both heroes get knocked down for 2 seconds. The heroes and abilities that can get cancelled with Charge are as follows. Doomfist's Rocket Punch, Brigitte's Shield Bash, another Reinhardt's Charge, or a Charging Bob summoned by Ash. This introduces another interesting tech that I call Counterpinning. This is where you use Charge defensively to cancel one of the previously mentioned abilities. What's interesting is the physics aren't super realistic here, so as long as you're able to start the Charge animation, you're able to cancel the enemy's ability, even if you haven't started moving forward yet. The main use I have for counterpinning is to prevent an enemy Reinhardt from landing a pin on you or your teammates. Oftentimes, due to the YOLO nature of charging, if you're able to counterpin an enemy Rhin, your team will usually be in a better position to follow up on the 2 seconds where you're both stunned. This can vary based on each team's composition, but going for a counterpin is usually the right call because it will prevent someone on your team from getting pinned. Side note, if a Reinhardt already has someone pinned when they are counterpinned, that character will take the 300 damage as though they had been pinned against a wall. Other than enemy Reinhardt's, Doomfist is the other character you'll want to look to counterpin since the slow windup of his punch gives you time to react and defend against it. Plus, since Doomfist has less health than you, he is much less likely to survive being knocked down than you are. A couple more notes on charge. If you're playing against an enemy Orisa, her fortify can stop your charge in its tracks, dealing no damage. So either avoid her with your charge or wait for her to use Fortify, then go for a pin on her when it's on cooldown. If you manage to pin an opponent without taking them into a wall, they will be stunned and thrown a short distance at the end of the pin. You can use this to throw someone off the edge with your pin for an environmental kill, although the window for this is very narrow as if you don't judge the distance correctly, you'll go off the ledge too. This feels especially bad if you try to do it to an enemy like Tracer, Genji, or Winston, who will be able to get back onto the map while you sail off the edge after the pin. Finally, since Charge is Reinhardt's one movement ability, you can use it as a way to quickly get around the battlefield. The most basic use of this is to come out of spawn faster, but you can use it anytime you need to reposition quickly. For example, if both of your healers get picked before the fight, you can try to pin backwards for a hard reset so that you don't feed the enemy any extra ult charge. Some closing thoughts on this ability. What's amazing about Charge is that you can play Reinhardt really well without ever using this ability. I've won so many games without ever using Charge. It's so high risk and high reward that oftentimes you're better off not pinning at all instead of going for questionable pins and being punished for it. 
This is one of the few abilities in the game I recommend holding on to unless you are very, very sure you have a good use for it due to how easy it is to punish and how devastating it is to lose a Reinhardt at the beginning of a team fight. So if you only learn one thing from this section, let it be to not charge directly into the enemy team. Okay, on to Reinhardt's last ability, his ultimate, Earth Shatter. This is one of the most dynamic ults in the game, capable of single-handedly winning a team fight and making Reinhardt one of the most feared characters in the game. In this ability, Reinhardt slams his hammer into the ground, which fires out in a cone along the ground 20 meters ahead of him, knocking down anyone caught in its hitbox for 2.5 seconds and dealing 50 damage. This hitbox also has a vertical height of 2 meters, meaning it will knock over heroes that are jumping or on the payload. What an awesome ability. Where to start? How about with how to effectively land an Earth Shatter without it getting blocked? Throwing your Earth Shatter into an enemy shield is one of the most frustrating things that can happen when playing Reinhardt, but there's some things you can do to minimize that from happening. One of the biggest keys to sneak an Earth Shatter past an enemy Rhine is to wait for the Reinhardt to fire strike. If you're ready to drop an Earth Shatter, keep a close eye on the enemy Reinhardt, and as soon as he begins the animation for Fire Strike, let your Earth Shatter rip and you will be able to shatter before the enemy Rhine is able to bring his shield back up because he will be locked in the Fire Strike animation for one second, while it only takes about a half second to drop Earth Shatter. Alternatively, a more surefire method of getting your Earth Shatter in is to wait until your team completely breaks the enemy Rhine shield, then shattering in the next five seconds while it's on cooldown. The lower the enemy Ryan's shield health drops, the harder it will be for him to block the shatter because they should be less willing to put their shield up and risk it getting destroyed, so it'll have more downtime. You'll also want to watch out for Zarya bubbles, as these will block everything behind them from the effects of your shatter. You're going to want to keep track of her bubble usage, and if she has recently used both of her bubbles, you'll have a green light to drop the shatter. You even need to be careful of Winston's, Sigma's, and Orissa's because if it's too obvious that you want to shatter, they can all block it pretty easily with their shield. Just bait out their shield, then move past them and shatter. Another good tip for Earth Shatters is that you can shatter enemies behind the payload. Since the payload is floating, your shatter will travel underneath it, and teams will more often let their guard down when taking cover from behind the payload, so shattering underneath it is a great way to take them by surprise. Finally, you can increase your chances of landing a shatter if you position yourself away from the enemy tanks altogether. For example, if you take an off angle and encounter two healers or a healer and a DPS, let that shatter fly and help yourself to two easy kills. Not every shatter has to be a huge six-man shatter. Landing a shatter and confirming eliminations on two backline heroes early in a fight should almost always be enough to win you that fight. If you're playing Reinhardt properly, you should be able to charge your Earth Shatter fairly quickly, which means you should use it more aggressively, because even if you miss, you will have another Shatter very soon. Earth Shatter is such a powerful ability with the potential to swing entire fights that you should be looking to land as many successful Shatters as possible, instead of holding onto it for the perfect 6-man. In fact, perfect Shatters rarely hit the entire enemy team, because with the stun time lowered to 2.5 seconds, it's much harder to eliminate all 6 enemies before they're able to get up and utilize their abilities to escape and survive. Instead, jockey around for positioning and try to find an angle where you can find 2 unshielded enemies that you can drop with your shatter. A rule of thumb I have here is to never assume your team is going to follow up on your shatter, so try to play like you will have to finish the eliminations yourself. If you're too low health or enemies are too far away, it's better to hold off and look for a different opportunity to use Shatter. Oh man, where are my manners? I forgot to introduce you to the basic Earth Shatter combo. This combo will deal maximum damage to a single target like an enemy tank, and it goes like this. Earth Shatter, then a hammer swing, animation cancelled with a fire strike, then a pin. You should be able to get all this in, maybe even sneaking in an extra hammer swing before the enemies get back to their feet, and it deals 535 total damage. If an enemy is able to survive the pin, usually one more hammer strike after the pin is enough to eliminate them. You'll also want to try to line up the downed enemies with your fire strike for maximum value. Crouching before you throw the fire strike can give you a better angle on the downed enemies here. Now, an important thing to note here is oftentimes you're better off just fire striking and swinging away on downed enemies versus going for the pin combo. This is generally true if there are a lot of 200 HP enemies clumped up together, as the Earth Shatter plus 2 Hammer Swing combo is enough damage to eliminate these squishies, which are higher priority targets than the tank you would be pinning. Don't forget to use Earth Shatter to counter an enemy ultimate. Enemies often don't expect you to use Earth Shatter defensively, so you can catch ulting enemies like Genji, Moira, or Roadhog in exposed positions and flip the advantage back to your team. 
This is another way to land successful shatters if you're trying to maximize the amount of shatters you drop in a single game. There are two other small earth shatter techs that I won't get into in this video because it's already getting long and I personally never use them, but I will drop links to instructional videos for these techs in the description. The first tech is a 180 shatter that you drop while facing away from the enemy team with your shield up, and the other is bunny hop shattering, which adds a small skip to your animation and may allow you to bypass a nearby shield. That's all I have for earth shatter, let's move on to the final section, how to win the Rhine v Rhine duel in team comps. Now, I've combined these two subjects because your team's and the enemy team's team composition will largely impact how you need to approach the Rhine v Rhine duel. I want you guys to picture a spectrum, with one side being maximum aggression Reinhardt and the other side being maximum passive Reinhardt. You need to understand how the other characters on your team influences where your playstyle will end up on that spectrum. For example, it's going to be really hard to go maximum aggression as Rhine if your healers look like this, and the enemy Rhine's healers look like this. Simply put, you need a lot of healing and support in order to go really aggressive with Reinhardt. So the first step before the match begins is to look at your healers and determine how much healing you will get and subsequently how aggressive you can be. My ideal combo for maximum aggression is an Ana and Baptiste. However, oftentimes I'll get something like a Lucio and Mercy pair, which just isn't enough burst healing to be super aggressive. In this case, you need to play more passively, playing around corners and your shield more and looking to punish aggression rather than being aggressive yourself. Now, support comes in more forms than just healing, and there are other non-support characters that can enable you to play more aggressively. The most classic example of this is Zarya, whose projected bubble can allow you to swing your hammer without fear of being stunned and burst down quickly. I would expand this kind of support to any character that can help you hold down the front line and pressure the front line of the enemy team as to punish the enemy Rhine anytime he drops his shield. Examples of these kind of characters include Roadhog, D.Va, Mei, Reaper, Symmetra, and even high burst damage characters like Bastion or Hanzo. I made this nifty tier list to help you visualize what characters will enable you to play more aggressive and which you will need to play more passive with. I'll include a link to this chart in the description in case you want a longer look at it. Okay, now that we have a good understanding of how team comps affect your play as Reinhardt, let's discuss the Rhine v Rhein matchup. For our purposes, let's assume the team comps are identical so neither Rhine has an inherent advantage. We're going to be tying in themes from the whole video, so I hope you've been paying attention. You'll want to open by fire striking the Rhine and as many players on his team as possible. The name of the game is to charge your Earth Shatter before the enemy Rhine charges his. This is where your skill in short range poking will come into play. You'll want to land as many hammer swings as possible on the enemy Rhine and his team while also trying to avoid getting hit by the enemy Reinhardt. Utilize corner swinging and look for your teammates to create openings, either by getting bubbled by your Zarya, stunning the enemy Rhine, or pressuring his shield down faster than yours is being pressured. If you're able to swing on the enemy Rhine while he's forced to keep his shield up in order to stay alive, this is a really good sign you're winning the Rhine duel. However, what if you're on the other end of this and you are the one getting pushed back? Remember to play for your life, so give up ground and try to get around a corner. You can try and bait the other Rhine into pushing too far into your team, then look for a short perpendicular pin that will land in your space that your team will be able to capitalize on. Once you get to around 80% of your ult charge, you should do a quick mental check on if you think you've been doing more or less damage than the enemy Reinhardt. If you think you've been doing less damage, you need to prepare to block the enemy shatter. If you think you've been doing more damage, you should look to land a successful shatter as soon as possible. Hopefully, this will win the fight before the other Reinhardt even has his shatter charged and you will be well on your way to charging your second ult by the time the enemy team respawns. That brings us to probably the most important part of the Rhein v Rhein matchup, blocking shatters. Blocking an earth shatter is just as impactful as landing a successful shatter, if not even more impactful due to how mentally booming it can be to the enemy Reinhardt. You absolutely must be tracking the enemy Rhine's ult charge, because once you know he has his ult, blocking the shatter becomes your number one priority. This is something that will take time, but you should try to use your own ult charge to judge how close the enemy might be to theirs, or even keeping a mental tab of how much damage the enemy Rhine has done since their last ult usage. Another dead giveaway the enemy Rhine has their shatter, especially in lower ranks or with new Rhine players, is they will suddenly posture much more aggressively, using their shield to get as close to you as possible. I love when enemy rides do this because they make their intentions really obvious and it makes it really easy to block the shatter. 
Make sure you're calling out to your teammates in chat when you think the enemy Rhine has their ult. And if your teammates are smart, they'll try to position away from the Rhine or look to counter it. So long story short, if you've lost track of where the enemy Rhine's ult percentage may be, just pay attention to his body language. Okay, so you know the enemy Ryan has his shatter, but he's playing coy and you're not sure when he wants to use it. At this point, you should try to bait it out of him. The best way to do that is animation cancelling your swing with your shield. If you move forward while swinging, the Ryan might think he has an opening to land a shatter, so you can try to bait it out of him with an animation cancel. When I do this, I am hyper focused on the enemy Ryan, waiting to see the start of his earth shatter animation because you will only have a small window of time to get your shield up once the animation starts. Additionally, when the enemy Ryan has his shatter, you don't want to hold your shield up constantly because the lower its health becomes, the harder it will be to block the enemy's shatter. That's why it's important to keep swinging at the enemy Ryan while animation canceling with your shield. This is a total mind game and you'll want to be flashing your shield on and off to keep the enemy Ryan on his toes and unsure of when or where he'll find an opening. If you're able to block the enemy Ryan's shatter while successfully landing your own, the chances of your team winning the game skyrocket. This is why it's important to focus on building your ult as quickly as possible while being aware of the enemy Ryan's ult charge and ready to block it. Okay folks, this guide is getting really long so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new about Reinhardt that you're excited to try in your own gameplay. If you did enjoy the video, please like and subscribe to help the channel keep growing and keep me churning out more content. If you want to hang out with me on stream, find me on Twitch at The Real Mango Slice. I also have a Twitter and a Discord server, I'll link in the description if you want to find me there. That does it for me friends, good luck, have fun, Mango out. <laughs>